Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another video on batteries. The most boring part of the FPV hobby. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most important, especially for those of you guys just starting out. In previous videos, we talked about how to read the information on a battery in order to differentiate between a good LiPo and a bad LiPo when making your first purchase. Then we talked about how to use them properly in order to expand their lifespan. This week, we're going to be talking about how to charge your LiPos, both efficiently and safely, to prevent this. Alright, so before you get started charging your batteries, you have to make sure that you have the right charger for the job. You could get a really cheap one like this, which would probably run you around $10, but just don't. Those really budget chargers are extremely underpowered and they probably can't even balance the cells within your batteries. I don't want to go into too much detail about that in this video, but if you want more information on chargers and what you should look for when making your first purchase, Check out this video here that I made on this charger right over here. There are a few features that you might want your chargers to have and a few reasons why it's often better to spend a little bit more when buying one. And I talk about all that in great detail in that video. So I'll link it above and in the description below. All right, so now you have your charger. First, let's talk about charging a single battery at a time. And the process is really simple. First, plug in your charger. Then you want to plug in your XT60 connector first, which looks like this, and then your balance port. Make sure your pins line up with the balance port correctly, starting with pin number one, which is usually on the right hand side, and moving to the left. This should give you a reading of the voltage of your battery and each individual cell. Now, my charger automatically detects that a 4S battery has been plugged in, and it'll configure to charge to the correct voltage. Now remember that whether or not your charger has this feature, you always wanna double check and make sure that you're charging to 4.2 volts per cell. And you never wanna charge over that or else you can have some serious problems. I'll also include a chart right here for reference so that you know what your entire LiPo should be charged to based on how many cells it has. So, it's easy to know how much charge to give your batteries because you always want to charge them up to 4.2 volts per cell. However, it's also important to determine how quickly you're going to charge them. Now, a lot of chargers are capable of charging your battery at a variety of speeds. However, faster is not always better. The safest way to charge your batteries is at 1C or at 1 times the capacity. So if I want to charge this 1500 milliamp hour or 1.5 amp hour battery at 1C, I would charge it at 1.5 amps. This is a 850 milliamp hour or 0.85 amp hour battery. So I would want to charge it at somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9 amps. Again, this is the safest way to charge your batteries. However, there's a downside, because it takes a very long time. No matter what size your battery is, to charge it from fully empty at a 1C rating, it would take a little bit under 45 minutes. I currently have eight batteries, so if I was to charge them all separately at 1C, if each one takes 45 minutes, altogether it would take me around six hours. Even if you have a charger with two ports, where you can charge two batteries at a time, it would still take you three hours. Luckily, there are two ways you can speed it up. First, you could try to increase the current. And instead of charging your battery at 1C, you could try charging it at 2C, or twice the speed of the capacity, which would charge it twice as fast. If you're really pressed on time, some people might even say that it's okay to charge once in a while at 3C or 4C, but the higher the speed you charge your batteries at, the more dangerous it becomes. 
Even if nothing happens while you're charging the battery, the more often you charge at higher C ratings, the more your battery will degrade over time. Therefore, I would recommend that you stick to a 1C speed whenever possible. Maybe if you're really pressed on time, you could boost that up to 2C. However, I would never go over that unless it's an emergency, your batteries are away from anything flammable, and you're also willing to risk the possibility of a LiPo fire. The other option, if you don't want to boost the current, is to parallel charge. Parallel charging refers to the use of a parallel charging board like this one, which lets you increase the amount of batteries that you could charge on one charger at a time. Instead of charging one battery per port, this board would allow me to charge up to six. Now, just like charging your battery at higher speeds, parallel charging could also pose a little bit of increased risk if done incorrectly. This is why there are a few preliminary steps that must be taken every single time before you charge. First, in order to parallel charge both successfully and safely, you wanna make sure that all your batteries are the same cell count. You never wanna charge a 3S battery with a 4S, or a 4S with a 5S, or whatever. If you're charging 4S batteries, you wanna make sure that they're all 4S. Otherwise, the charger is gonna to try to distribute the amps equally amongst all the batteries, and the smaller battery will end up getting overcharged, which is incredibly dangerous. To be extra safe, usually I'll only parallel charge batteries that are the same brand and the same model. Different brands of batteries could have a slightly different composition, and also just by seeing that all your batteries are identical, it makes it really easy to avoid making a stupid mistake. Next, you also wanna make sure that all the batteries you intend on charging together have a similar voltage. Ideally, when you plug them into this board, you would want all of these batteries to have the exact same amount of volts within them. Like I mentioned before, the charger is gonna think that it's charging one big battery and not four little ones, so it's gonna try to distribute the amps equally and charge them equally. If the voltages vary, some of the batteries might end up getting overcharged, and again, that's really dangerous. Luckily for you, there is a little bit of leeway, and you can charge batteries together that differ up to 0.1 volts per cell. Again, this is per cell, so these 4S batteries, their entire voltage could differ up to 0.4 volts. So, I have eight 4S batteries here and their voltages are as follows. These batteries here could be safely charged together in parallel, and these could be charged in a separate batch. Each of these two groups has a maximum difference of 0.4 volts between them, which means they're safe to charge. This last battery should be charged separately as its voltage is too far from the others. Otherwise, if this battery was charged with the others, the same risks apply of possibly overcharging one of the batteries. Now, let me show you how to actually do it. First, plug in your balance board. When plugging in your batteries into the balance board, it is recommended to plug in the XT60 connector, which is this one, before the balance lead. However, if you have already made sure that all the batteries are at a similar voltage, uh, this isn't a big deal either way. When plugging in your balance lead, make sure you are plugging in to the correct port and in the right direction. One side of the connector will have little guides to show you the direction, but a tip for most boards is that the red wire from your battery will most likely always be on the inside. Plug these in slowly to avoid any mistakes and causing a short. Also, your parallel charging board will probably have balance connectors on each side which one you plug them into doesn't really matter as long as it has the right amount of pins. After you plug them in, I would let them sit for a little bit. If you have a charger that can show you this, you'll notice that the voltages between each battery start to regulate even more and balance out uh, at closer voltages than you had before. So after a few minutes, after they settle, that's when you can start to charge. When it comes to parallel charging, I would never charge over a 1C speed. However, 1C for a single battery is very different than 1C for four batteries. As I mentioned before, for this 1500 milliamp hour battery, 
we want a current of 1.5 amps. However, if we were to charge four of these batteries using 1.5 amps, the power would be split amongst the four batteries, and we would actually be charging them using 0.375 amps each. This is no longer 1C, but actually around 0.25C. This means if we're charging four times the amount of batteries at once, we can also quadruple the amperage at which we're charging at. And we can charge these four batteries with the charger set to six amps. The charger will then split those amps amongst the batteries and provide each one with 1.5 amps. And it's as easy as that. All the batteries will charge at the same time, and after they finish charging, the charger will also balance all the cells within the batteries. I also wanted to add one other note in case it wasn't clear before, that some chargers have two separate ports or channels that can perform two different and completely separate tasks. Anything plugged into channel one will not affect anything on channel two. In fact, you could treat them as two separate chargers built into one. Therefore, even though I wasn't able to charge this 4S battery with the rest of them, I could plug this one into a separate channel, and anything that happens on channel 1 will not affect what's happening on channel 2. I could even plug in a 3S battery into channel 2, and it will not affect the 4S battery's parallel charging on channel 1. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that both channels will share the amount of amps that they can draw from your power source, so there is a limit. Your charger will have a max amount of amps that it can draw from the power supply, and the charging that's going on in channel one and two um, together can't surpass that amount. Well, if you feel like you learned anything from this video, please give it a like. It really helps a lot. Consider subscribing over here, or check out my playlist of getting started in FPV videos right over here. If there's anything you feel that I failed to mention, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll definitely answer most of your comments. Again, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.